if if you don't okay. get it done. Great. Well, thank you, Lynn. Um, you know, reflecting on all the time that I've been here, I'm just so thankful for the gift of being with a group of people and even reflecting on Dora and her life. A little one grew up here, right? And she she ran through the hallways and many of you here nodding your heads. You were her Sunday school teachers. And um, it is living a life together we've done over many years, which leads so perfectly into what we're trying to do and what we're learning about in Ephesians of living, um, well, life in the spirit, but together, right? A life lived in God for one another. So that's actually quite beautiful to reflect on. There are very unique things about being part of a church community. And one of those is that we are choosing and asking the Lord to lead us in the Lord's way to, Lord, how do you do it? So as we are um, invited to participate in the life of the spirit, we are going into a very counter-cultural way and into a whole new way of life. So it's quite the thing to be a church community together where we are always rubbing against the ways we all know how to do things. Think of um, the number of people on this call right now, which is what, 24 of us, we all learned a way of being from our families, right? And then we all came together and we're trying to learn a way of being as people of faith together. And then we are all people and there may be people who grew up in other countries, um, other places, but we're kind of also going, how do we live this way of Christ when we are steeped in a way of being that may be American, a way of being that is our original family, a way of being that we're trying to understand as the people of faith. And that is going to inherently be messy, right? It just is going to be messy because we're going to have all sorts of things that rub up against one another of how do we live this life? And so Paul's encouragement to us in Ephesians is um, to be filled with the Spirit. A couple of weeks ago, I was with you, um, and I mean, I've been with you. It's been so fun to do this study together and hear all the teaching um, but those couple of weeks ago, we were talking about the transition in Ephesians, that there was this hinge point that was a prayer for the way that um, we would be in Christ that led to um, how we would live this out. Paul had this great introduction to what this, what the life of faith is, and then this deep prayer for us as we moved in, okay, what does that look like for brass tacks in our life? And so we get to some of those deeply today. Um, and before I dive in to sharing the scripture with you, let's pray for a moment. So, beloved Lord, as we walk through this passage, thank you that your Holy Spirit can illuminate it for us. As each one of us are coming from our own distinct places, all places you have well gifted us to be, would you help us see how you are leading us now, both within our own self, our own life, and then how we are together? We ask for your guiding uh, presence of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. The um, last week when Pam was talking about, I just love that, coming out of the shadow and into the light. And this is, in a sense, kind of even continuing that about how do we live in the light? I'm going to read the passage for us, but I'm going to invite you to look for three things. And I'm going to do it a little bit slowly because I want, if you've got a, um, your handout or a piece of paper in front of you, um, I'd love for you to write like three columns or three lists. And if you've got hey, a little scrap paper, you could do them all separate. And it's this. I want you to hear when it says, do this, that's one list. Paul says, do this. And then there'll be another list, do not do this, the do nots. It's a third one. Listen for the you are. You are. So in that, let's read the scripture. Going to um, 
read it from the book we have here, but you also, I think it's a slightly different translation, but here we go. Follow God's example. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or a greedy person, such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, wake up sleeper, rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit speaking to one another with songs, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. The word of the Lord. So did you hear that all of the do this? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what I came up with. Do this. Walk in the way of love. Offer thanksgiving. Live as children of light. Find out what pleases God. Expose deeds of darkness. Oh, hearkening back to last week, bring things into the light. Wake up, rise from the dead, live as wise, make the most of each opportunity, understand the Lord's will, be filled with the Spirit. Speak with psalms, hymns, songs from the Spirit. Speak the Spirit's language. And I can't help but throw in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, generosity, faithfulness, and love. Self-control. 
sing and make music from your heart. Give thanks to God always. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Do you all catch anything else? So here was the do not do this, the do not list. Sexual immorality, any kind of impurity, greed, obscenity, foolish talk, coarse joking, partnering with those who are immoral, greedy, impure. Do not have anything to do with fruitless deeds of darkness. Be foolish, get drunk. That's what I caught from the do not list. All about the you are. I got one. You are light in the Lord. So in these lists, well, let me, I'm going to go this way. Have you ever tried to change your habits, your eating habits? I have tried this before knowing, oh, I am just eating too much junk. Advice you can get, and I, there was a, a coach, some of you, there's a wonderful woman who's part of our MOPS program, who's a personal trainer and all that. And she has a great way of reflecting on this. She calls it eat your pros, your protein and your produce. But the point being out of it, it's a simple thing. We all get it really well of how we are, if we're looking at how we're eating or whatnot. Don't list all the things you can't eat, you do not want to eat. Look for what you do want to put on your plate. So saying, hey, fill your plate with the veggies and the fruits and the, you know, good proteins, this kind of thing. So I always want you to say in this scripture passage, you can crumple up the do not do because your eyes don't need to go to that list. Your eyes need to go to the do this list. This is what we're invited into. And here's a key, I think, thing that I want to press on for us is in this, because we have a, I mean, it literally does say do this and do not do this. But it also, in this being filled with the Spirit, what we're moving away from by being filled with the Spirit is a try hard life filled with lists that are oppressive. Right? So there's two words I want you to remember with life with the Holy Spirit. Participation and invitation. And maybe I should have said it the other way. Invitation and participation. Life with Christ, we are invited into life with the triune God. Throughout Ephesians, you'll notice you see God the Father mentioned, you see Jesus mentioned, and you see the Holy Spirit. There is always this communal way of being in the Trinity, and we are invited into that. And the difference between being invited into something where you are surrounded or immersed in something, um, that's what I want you to feel. So I'm, I'm going to give a couple of examples to try to get that feeling of what it's like to be immersed in something. Have you, any of you been down to the Lake Grove Swim Park or well, just a pool, whatever, you know, go to the end of the dock, throw your arms out. And okay, now, honestly, I'm at the age where I just like to watch the kids do it. We go out to the end of the dock and then throw their arms out and just plunge themselves into the water. They are surrounded by water. We are invited into a life with Christ where you come up and we say, I want to be, yes, in your life, throw out your arms and fling yourself back. We are immersed in the Holy Spirit, like those kids, like we are immersed in the lake. Now, can you remember um, trying to learn how to float on water or to swim? The biggest difficulty you have in floating is when you are trying really, really hard. When you're trying to grab the water, or even if you can think about it, I did this, but I grew up, um, my grandparents had um, a Minnesota little cottage on a lake. And so we would spend a couple weeks just, oh, playing, playing, playing in the water. 
the difference between learning how to just jump into the water and then lay your head back, let your lungs be filled with air and float versus kind of panicky, moving, moving, moving. And then later I've, um, in high school, got to be a lifeguard and teach swimming lessons. And that the difference of a body in water, trying its very best to keep itself afloat, it almost works conversely, doesn't it? And that gets harder and harder and you sink and then you're out of breath and you feel panicky. Versus lay your head back, fill your lungs with air, be filled with the spirit and let them hold you, held in the water. Invitation to win. Participation. So there's just a, we live a life and rightly, go rightly so. And in our community, especially, we have a lot of, we have a lot of hard driving people and that's the culture we live in, right? Kind of achievement, go for a goal, get it out there. Um, we are living in that context and it, that actually, let's, let's put it this way, in our culture, and in American culture, it is a striving, right? It is a striving and um, there's a deep individualism about us and I can make my own way. Um, sometimes we see it most when we're telling other people that they can make their own way, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, do this kind of a thing. Um, there is a deep individualism, try hard. And if you try hard enough, you will make it. Um, and I want to set that next to this invitation in the life of the spirit to receive, participate and receive. I think that might be one of the hardest things for us to do in the cultures that we are in. So put a pin in that. And I want to tell you a little bit about the culture in Ephesus, which helps us understand all of this language. So there's, there's a primary, um, I don't know if the word would be fair to say religious cult, a way of being there um, by, of Dionysus. And the way that they would worship and be a part of that is to get drunk. And so here you're gonna see why Paul chose these things, don't get drunk. And so it's like that they would gather for these things, excessive drinking, excessive to be, it says, don't get drunk on wine. Don't fill yourself up with this thing that you are then controlled by. And then it led to all sorts of, you know, yeah. that's why he's talking about, don't do these deeds in the darkness. This is odd. What they're, this, is not, this is not a life flourishing in Christ when um, you are controlled, like in this Dionysus cult, where you are drunk drunken orgies, drunken, drunken, all of these things. That is not the life for you. The invitation to be filled with the spirit is to let ourselves be constantly controlled by the Holy Spirit. But I want to be careful with those words because it's a um, participation in the Holy Spirit. I want to let those words hang a little bit as you think. When you think of the word of, of being controlled, but you pause on that, how do you react? I'll speak for myself. And the, I mean, it is a fascinating human experiment that we're doing, um, that we're living in right now. Once you tell someone they have to do something, what is their response often? Don't tell me what I have to do. No way. And it is, and I'm speaking for myself right here. I love chocolate cake. If you start handing me a piece of chocolate cake and say, you have to have this. Isn't it a fascinating human reaction that we have? It just is, that's just to notice. And what I'm wanting us to feel and see and sense in our way with Christ is this deep invitation to participate in the life of the spirit 
And God is so tender, kind, courteous, respectful, will not force the way. You are invited into an intimate relationship to receive and then live out of that in a giving. To be filled with the Holy Spirit then is to say, I can receive from you, Lord, your way of being and then move in it. Versus, you are controlling my every move. I, um, yeah, and I don't mean to be on it too much, but I think it's just such a deep part of our culture because there is a difference between unbridled individualism, which is I want to do what I want to do and when I want to do it. And if that's not okay with you, too bad. That's unbridled individualism, right? And we're not invited into that in the Christian faith. And so sometimes I think we've taken it, and I so understand it, this thing of like, no, Lord, I'm completely yours. I'm surrendered to you. And those are beautiful words and hard words. Like, I mean, if we're immersed in it, but if we swing too far to this pendulum, you'll get, so God, whatever you want to do in me, you need to do it. And we can let go of our own agency. To be filled by the Spirit means the Spirit is filling your vessel, who you are, and then able to act and move in the world out of who you've been made to be. So I'm trying to thread this beautiful image, like I want you to place your hands, place yourself into the hands of God and say, Lord, your way. But also saying, and with you, I will live this life. Because I think sometimes we might make a mistake and have a whole lot of people, particularly women, sitting on the sidelines of their life saying, I'm not going to move till you move me, Lord. When you have desire welling up in you for, I want to do this. I want to do that. And there can be a um, desire for bad things that do not do list. But then there's simple desire of we've been made as human beings to flourish in the world, to be connected, to offer gifts, to lead, to be a part of community. And so what I want us to do is be able to say, my life in your hands, God. Those are beautiful things. Your life, how it's designed to be in God's hands. You living your beautiful um, design in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so that's um, it just, I think it's an important thing for us to understand because we can often feel like, well, of course I'm gonna be greedy and immoral and live in the darkness. And I know I may have desires that lead me there. So all my desire is bad. That's not true. Actually keep looking underneath. What are you longing for? What are you needing? What are you wanting? The ways that we have been created and designed by God for community, for being known, for being loved, let those be poured into the hands of God and then led in a right way. Um, I loved this. This was Allison Cook, who she's a therapist and um, psychologist, has this little quip, live from yourself versus for yourself. Another way I'd like to say this is we want to live fully out of who we are for the flourishing of us all. And this is done through the empowering of the Holy Spirit. No. Um, Eugene Peterson has a beautiful way of reflecting on life in the Spirit and saying our life with Christ, what it means for us to be filled with the Spirit is this is the way that we actually are empowered to live all that God asks us to live. If this is actually livable. And how that is, is um, through the Holy Spirit. Here's a note. Um, let's see. I want to share this. This is a little bit about our culture and teasing it out. Because what we're asking to do to 
to be one imitators of God, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to walk in God's way, it really is countercultural. Hear this in, in um, the paragraph. He says it, it's in a beautiful book, um, Practice Resurrection, a conversation about growing up in Christ. And it's all about the book of Ephesians. He says, a formidable difficulty in practicing love and worship is placed in our way by the ways of this world. He's talking about practicing love and worship. Love would be that beautiful invitation we were given at the beginning of this chapter to live the way of love. And then worship is really the being filled by the spirit, spirit orienting your life to God, letting our way of being be worship. So he says a difficulty in this is basically by living where we live, right? It is a world in which neither love nor worship has a high profile of credibility. To love and worship in contemporary America, and it was no different in ancient Ephesus and Rome and Athens, is to be dismissed by the culture to a dustbin of irrelevance. Love and worship are well and good if all you want to do is to take care of your soul. But if you want to make a difference in the world, bring prosperity to the poor, bring peace to the nations, bring food to the hungry, bring healing to the sick, bring health to the environment, forget about love and worship as ways to get anything done. If you are serious about doing something about what's wrong with the world, you must adopt ways that have a proven track record, do something that works, something that is effective. The approved means of doing good in the world, accredited by the powers that be, and sanctioned by popular practice are education, technology, propaganda, advertising, legislation, and money. And as a last resort, war. If problems can't be solved any other way, we go to war. But that was a clear indictment and one of the things that makes it difficult for us to live a soft life of love that is profoundly effective and being filled by the Holy Spirit when we live in such an environment that is pressing on us that it can't be done that way. We're after something quite magnificent and beautiful in this to be imitators of God, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to live in this, um, in the way of Jesus. It is a challenging countercultural way. What does it take to imitate someone? is just an invitation and in how we do this. Um, have you seen good uh, comedy where people are impersonating someone else? Or how many hours it takes to know their mannerisms and the way that they move? We want to be imitators of Christ, meaning we pay attention and we are alert. This is the other invitation of this chapter for us and being filled with the Holy Spirit is to always be aware and attentive. That's why Paul brings these lists because it can be easy to get into the, um, just going beyond the way. And if we're, if we're in water, that is not, if we're in water, we get moved along with the water, right? And so if we're moved, if we're in water of our culture, that expects it, hey, you got to go hard. What's most effective? It's actually highest power. The last thing it is, is self-sacrificial love like Christ's way. But um, then we can easily get moved along with that. And then we start taking on as the people of God ways of being that we were never invited into or asked to, to be by God. Ways of power and control, manipulation, Rather, we want to be alert, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, let ourselves be immersed in God so that we can actually live the way of God. I think the last invitation to do your handout and in your small groups, I loved it. If you don't have the, the if you have the book, you're familiar with, with many of these. 
but it's a way of orienting ourselves. Some of the, this first question, in a sense, she had the author in the book has this great question or practice of inviting her students to make pers personal mission statements. And then she would ask them to fill in the blank. You have those, and that can be a small group question or that can be reflect on your own. It's beautiful, but it's asking, how will I be alert? How do I wanna live my life alert and awake to the power of God? And um, into the reality that I can participate in the life of the spirit simply because God is inviting. Um, 